Hey everyone, and welcome to our early look PvP range tier list for the up and coming expansion, Shadowlands. This tier list has been put together using our expert opinions and rank one consultants based off of early beta arena gameplay and patch notes. This means a lot of what you see may be subject to change. What this tier list will offer though is a first look at what's doing well and why when it comes to PvP. We will be releasing a more solidified tier list shortly after the release of Shadowlands once we have finalized patch notes and tuning. Before we get started though, if you're as bored of BFA as we are and excited for Shadowlands, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring that bell for more up-to-date Shadowlands content in the future. For this tier list, we're going to be placing our ranged specs into five tiers, ranging from C tier all the way up to our S tier. We'll be starting from C tier and working our way up. All right, so kicking things off, the first addition to our tier list and our lowest tier C is going to be Demonology Warlocks. Throughout BFA, Demonology didn't really bring much when it came to PvP, having quite low sustained damage and relying a lot on building up damage with imps and pets, and then casting a Tyrant to deal your burst damage. So not only having to build up your damage, but then casting a Telegraphed pet cast that can then be interrupted, or you can either just line of sight, it just doesn't work when it comes to PvP. Moving forward for Shadowlands, Demonology is remaining relatively the same in terms of core gameplay, still revolving all around Tyrant and setting up your burst. Other than some good changes like the Azerite trait Baleful Invocation being tied into Tyrant and Demonic Circle being baseline along with the addition of Curses, Demonology will definitely be improved upon, but again, the core aspects of the spec just don't work when it comes to PvP. So just like in BFA, Demonology will once again find itself in our lowest tier. The second addition to our lowest tier is going to be BM Hunter. Hunter is actually getting quite a lot of cool abilities back, including Scare Beast and Kill Shot, although they are still heavily lacking when it comes to PvP. BM has taken more of an AoE and cleave role when it comes to their damage, and in PvP, this, as we all know, just isn't ideal. Again, similar to Demonology, the core of BM remains the same, utilizing Barb Shot and Frenzy. As we saw from BFA, though Beast Mastery is heavily dependent on secondary stats in order to fully maximize its potential. At the start of an expansion, secondary stats are very scarce. Not to mention, probably the biggest issue for BM is the nerf to revive pet, making the cast a lot longer, and we all know how important a pet is to BM hunters. So targeting this and locking them down will make them obsolete in PvP. And Covenants are also looking to not favor BM when it comes to PvP, with all of their class abilities being heavily focused around cleave. Hunters will still have some very strong specs going into Shadowlands, but BM is unfortunately not one of them. All right, that's going to be it for our C tier though, so now we're jumping up to the B tier. First up is Affliction Warlock. Affliction is looking good for so many reasons. First is just the high damage it's capable of. All their dots do ridiculous damage. Affliction no longer relies on stacking Unstable Affliction on a single target in order to burst. Unstable Affliction now costs no shards, but is limited to only one target, and while this may seem odd in Arena, this is insane due to the addition of a new PvP talent called Rampant Afflictions. Rampant Afflictions allows you to apply UA to three targets, meaning that you can maintain UA on three targets if you can cast, and now you can spend shards on Malefic Rupture. This causes you to erupt all of your dots on all targets, dealing some very high damage and adding to an Affliction Warlock's high spread pressure. In my eyes, this is exactly how the class should play. There's also been a buff to Death Bolt, which allows it to deal huge burst damage. Another great change, while if you've not played Affliction may seem small, is that now Corruption actually deals instant damage. This gives Warlocks a way to stomp totems, Scyphians, or just any instant damage at all if moving. Inevitable Demise is also set to make a return. If you remember, in BFA we had this as an Azerite trait that would stack up and one-shot if you allowed the Warlock to drain life. Well, this is back and in full effect, allowing the Warlock to set up some insane burst. The addition of Curses and the talent Amplify Curse is also pretty ridiculous right now. Weakness, Tongues, and Exhaustion are all now baseline for all Warlock specs, as well as a talent called Amplify Curse. What this does is empower your next curse every 45 seconds, so you can make the target unable to crit, and Curse of Weakness currently last 2 minutes. While we can't really see this going live in its current form, the talent just seems ridiculous for PvP. But hey, that's not why we put Affliction in our B tier. Why they're in our B tier is the potential of their legendary items. Affliction is the only Warlock spec with Gateway Mastery. When combined with Pillars of the Dark Portal, this can offer some insane mobility, especially now that Demonic Circle is baseline, which is going to aid greatly in helping Affliction deal with cleaves. 
Offensively though, you can pick up Claw of the Endereth. Paired up with the talent Inevitable Demise, this basically brings us back to the Drain Life one-shot spec. While another great option is the Sacralash's Dark Strike, which buffs your Corruption damage and gives your Corruption a passive 60% slow, as Corruption has no cast time or cooldown and lasts up to 24 seconds, this makes for an insane legendary. Conduits also play into the Affliction multi-dot playstyle, giving you the ability to get a reduced CD on Summon Dark Glare. Overall, Affliction is just set to be very strong, but suffers a lot of the same problems as current day Affliction, which holds it back from reaching higher on our tier list. It's because of how squishy they are and how reliant they are on chain casting to create any substantial pressure, which isn't aided by the fact that they have only one school of magic. The secondary addition to our B tier is going to be Balance Druid. Going into Shadowlands, Balance has seen quite a lot of tuning having their Eclipse mechanic reverted to a style similar to Wrath of the Lich King. Basically, what this does is buff Boomkin's filler abilities, Wrath, and Starfire. The current iteration of Balance in BFA lacks heavily when it comes to damage fillers. All their damage is tied into Star Surge and Dots. Giving Balance some more casted damage is going to make them a lot stronger when it comes to PvP, and have a lot more potential damage output. Also, with the addition of Shooting Stars now being baseline, this is a great change. What's catapulted Boomkin up into our B tier though is the addition of an old talent, Heart of the Wild. This one combined with Restoration Affinity enables Balanced Druids to pump out some absurd healing, similar to old iterations of Balance. Not to mention the buffs to all affinities now give some cool abilities like Ursul's Vortex, Incap Roar, or Maim Baseline. This means that Balanced Druids are going to have a lot easier of a job securing CC. Not to mention that some of Balance's legendaries are shaping up to be very strong. There are legendaries mimicking the old Arcanic Pulsar Azerite trait, as well as some very cool general legendaries such as Oath of the Elder Druid or Circle of Life and Death. What's currently holding Balance back though is a combination of weak Covenant abilities and just general damage output, although their healing, CC, and just general utility is very strong. Next, we have a spec that has dropped substantially since BFA, and that's Elemental Shaman due to the damage it deals so we cannot justify putting it higher on the list. But as with everything, tuning could change this. It seems Blizzard doesn't really know what to do with this spec, as they are toying between the addition of Fulmination or reverting back to Maelstrom. For now, Elementals are still using Maelstrom, so they're still using the same concept of building Maelstrom with your normal abilities, then spending it with Earthshock. Currently though, in BFA, a lot of Elementals damage comes from the Azerite trait Lava Shock which enables them to deal the hard-hitting Earth Shocks that we all know, and essences like Reaping Flames complementing their burst damage kit. Well, as we know, Azerite traits and essences are no more, so Elemental is losing a lot of its inherent power. Despite gaining some cool abilities like Echoing Shock and Static Discharge, Elemental has dropped back into the more utility-based caster role, with strong off-healing, powerful totems, and some decent burst damage. In regards to Covenant abilities, Elemental gains some of the weakest class abilities for PvP. Venthyr is a popular Covenant choice as of right now, which gives Elemental an ability not even worth using in Chain Harvest. The same goes for their legendary options, with all of them being incredibly lackluster when it comes to PvP, with their only real option being Windspeaker's Lava Resurgence, which just gives them some added damage on Lava Burst, an already weak ability. With that said though, with the correct tuning, Elemental has the potential to push a lot higher in this tier list due to just how strong their kit is when it comes to PvP. Still sitting in our B tier, we have another Fall from Grace. The former S tier casters from BFA, Fire Mages, have found themselves being quite a lot weaker. Although this was honestly to be expected, Fire borrows a lot of its power from outside sources, like the Lucid Dream's Essence and the Hyper Thread Wrist Wraps. While also receiving a 15 second cooldown to Greater Pyroblast, this will hit Fire hard, as now outside of their combustion, they have next to zero pressure. As for their strengths though, Fire is basically the same as we know from BFA. High burst damage that's all instant casts and great CC having the addition of Dragon's Breath. This means that Fire will still be very strong, but just more limited on comp choices, as now Fire can play in Caster Cleaves, RMP, pretty much any comp they can do well in. But with Greater Pyroblast being nerfed and their overall damage reduction, Fire will take more of a setup role in compositions like Rogue Mage. Not to mention something that's also holding Fire back from reaching any higher on this list is their lack of legendary choice having very limited options to choose from, with their best pick seemingly being Firestorm, but offering a low chance means it's very RNG and won't offer too much value. 
Okay, so based off of BFA, we have some surprising classes that went into our B tier. Now let's jump up one more tier and take a look at our penultimate one, our A tier. These classes are all extremely good right now, but just lack that something extra to put them into the S tier. In which our first edition is another spec that has had a fall from grace, and I think we're all very thankful for that. I'm of course talking about Destro Warlocks. Destruction Warlock, as we know it, was hit very hard from three different factors. First, the loss of essences obviously means no more vision of perfection. The talent Grimoire of Supremacy has also been removed, and to top it all off, Focused Chaos has also been nerfed substantially. Not to mention the lack of secondary stats during the early expansion, coupled with the loss of Flashpoint, means even securing Chaos Bolts has become an issue. Also losing some very impactful PvP talents like Entrenched in Flame Root means destruction will overall be a lot less annoying to face, and you won't have to worry about getting hit by a single Chaos Bolt. Alright, so how come, despite all these changes, Destro is still making it into our B tier? Well, Destro is looking to be taking a new path, one that we've seen before, and that's using its fire abilities to deal some strong instant damage, and even stronger casted damage. With Conflagration, Shadowburn, Incinerate, and Immolate all being very powerful, coupled with things like the Necrolord class ability, Decimating Bolt. Once gaining more haste is an option, abilities like Soulfire will also potentially see some play, as sort of a Chaos Bolt but with a cast time. The spec is looking to be incredibly strong when paired with this Legendary, which gives you even more instant damage buffing your Conflag. Combine this with all the new additions such as new Curses, Demonic Circle being baseline, and even pushback resistance on Fear is setting Destruction up to be a very fun to play spec and powerful one just nothing like the Destro we know today. Up next, we have the annoying to faced Frost Mages. Frost remains, for the most part, the same as it was in BFA, offering strong slows, good single target damage, and some relatively strong instant burst from Frozen Orb and Ice Lance. What's pushed Frost into our A tier is the buff to Winter's Chill. In BFA, Brain Freeze makes Flurry apply Winter's Chill, which allowed you to shatter. Well, in Shadowlands, this has been redesigned and now lasts 6 seconds and affects the next two spells hit. This is going to heavily buff Mage's instant burst damage during setups, giving them the ability to double Ice Lance after a flurry. The legendary items Frost Mage has the potential to use are also looking to be good. Freezing Winds will make your orb setups a lot more potent, giving you constant fingers of frost while it's active and then allowing you to get it back faster if you can cast. Cold Front also offers a very nice option if you're able to consistently cast being able to constantly get out orbs. Overall though, if you enjoyed BFA Frost, then Frost is a solid spec that performs well in Shadowlands Arena. Although it may not have the potential CC of Fire or the Burst of Arcane, the slows and consistent damage are enough to warrant a spot in our penultimate tier. A spec that we've not seen for some time is poising to make its return for Shadowlands. Marksmanship Hunter has been struggling to find a clear direction, suffering multiple design changes since its rework in Legion. Shadowlands is set to point that direction to a high burst, single target sniper. Getting a lot of what made it strong in previous expansions back, and with some positive tuning, it's set to be looking incredibly strong. Offering high single target burst from aim shot, kill shot, and rapid fire with very short CDs, meaning in setup compositions like Thug Cleave, for instance, every setup will allow the Marksman Hunter to really pump the damage. Part of what's making Marksmanship so strong right now is their Venthyr Covenant class ability, Flayed Shot. This is a relatively short cooldown, single target nuke that causes the target to bleed and give you a chance to use your kill shot regardless of the target's health and trust me, kill shot hits insanely hard. What's further helping Marksman find its footage is the addition of a new talent, Deadeye. This gives your kill shot two charges and causes aim shot to recharge 50% faster, giving Marksman some insane single target damage as well as finishing power. Binding Shot also now became baseline, giving Marksmen a much better chance at dealing with melee sticking to them, coupled with now also having Trank Shot, giving them access to a purge. Right now, MM also has an insane legendary called Soul Forge Embers. This utilizes two underused abilities, Flare and Tar Trap, to set your targets on fire and deal some absurd damage. Overall though, MM is looking to be in a much better position for Shadowlands, and I'm sure we'll see the return of compositions like Thug Cleave and even MM Jungle. So, we've reached the moment that you've more than likely been waiting for. Our final and strongest tier, the best of the best, our S tier. These two specs are currently the strongest two ranged casters on the Shadowlands beta. Both have received some major updates or new additions that have helped put them here. So let's take a look. Another spec we've not seen in some time poised to make a return and finding its place in our S tier is Arcane Mage. 
While not bad in BFA, Arcane has just been heavily overshadowed by both Frost and Fire in recent times. Well, now it's the return of the Arcane Dream. Despite its biggest drawback of now having the annoying to face displacement removed, Arcane Mages have received quite a few buffs to their damage. Not to mention having the addition of Fire Blast, Frostbolt, and even Conjure Mana Gem helps Arcane greatly, as now you have damage on other schools while also having Mana Gem to combat some mana issues. And I mean, more mana is just more damage. The big buffs that Arcane is receiving is two Presence of Mind, now giving you two Arcane Blasts, Touch the Magi being baseline, and big buffs to its mastery savant, as it will now include all spells instead of just Blast and Barrage. The new talent, Enlightened, is also looking to be huge for PvP Arcane, giving you a passive 7% damage increase if you manage your mana. Arcane is also receiving some very strong legendaries for PvP, specifically Arcane Harmony, buffing your missiles damage by a flat amount, and then making your barrage burst significantly harder. It's also worth noting that Arcane is now the only spec of Mage with Temporal Shield. Having both Temporal and Altered Time available gives them a lot of added survivability over their Frost and Fire counterparts. Arcane seems to be the go-to spec for Mages as of right now and is set to look very promising going forward, which will be a nice change from the current plethora of Fire and Frost Mages you see at high ratings in BFA. Our final and without a doubt strongest ranged on this list is going to be Shadow Priest. I mean, come on, the expansion is called Shadowlands after all. Shadow Priest has received a full overhaul, all of which has benefited them greatly when it comes to PvP. Shadow was always held back by the Void Form mechanic since its introduction in Legion. Having a mechanic where you have to build up damage never really works when it comes to a PvP environment. Void Form now has been reworked to more of a cooldown, having a 1.5 minute CD with a set uptime, meaning it's now more of a burst button instead of something you're having to cycle constantly. In its place, we now have the reintroduction of Devouring Play, giving Shadow a hard-hitting damage of time effect, costing insanity that not only does insane damage, but also heals the priest. A new mastery which increases your damage per dot on the target, which gains full value during Void Form. If you've played Shadow though, you would know that the two standout issues are getting your dots up and your lack of burst. Well, to address the issue of getting dots out, Shadow Priest not only has Damnation, a 45 second CD, which will apply all three of your dots to the target, but also Unfurling Darkness, which procs a Damnation, allowing you to get dots up onto two targets without even casting a single time. Shadow Word Death is also baseline and hits incredibly hard, acting as an execute, while reverting to how it used to be and giving you a way to avoid damage similar to a Disc Priest Premonition of current times. Shadow's Legendary and Covenant options also all greatly benefit PvP, with either extra damage on your Mindbender, making it an insane ST cooldown, or extra damage on Mind Blast, which is more consistent single target damage. In regards to Covenants, Mind Games is probably the best ability out of all the class abilities available. This essentially makes healers heals do damage and DPS's damage do healing, making for an insane tool in PvP. To top it all off though, Shadow received Thought Steal, a new PvP talent that allows them to steal high impact spells like Polymorph from Mages and Fear from Warlock. Overall, Shadow is set to be the strongest it's ever been if Beta is anything to go by. And as a Shadow Priest main, I'm extremely excited. All right then guys, that's going to do it for our range tier list for Shadowlands. What are you guys most looking forward to playing in Shadowlands and why? Let us know in the comments below. But for now, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for more up-to-date Shadowlands and BFA content.